Tyler, everyone, and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. I'd spend a little bit of a time because I was doing re-entry for the Apollo 11 52nd anniversary, and that was intense and took a lot of energy and was interesting, but it also required me to be in a very realism mindset. And so I decided to stick to that uh, for that time. But I am back and we are still cleaning up debris. Now, in the comments to the previous debris cleaning video, people said, well, it's not worth it because it costs more to launch the thing uh, than retrieve them. Maybe just knock them into the atmosphere, right? Uh, so just let them burn up and then you can launch something simpler, cheaper, and but I don't think it would be that much cheaper and people who made those comments were neglecting the fact that we were grabbing stuff in really hard to get orbits we were transferring we had a nuclear engine and we were transferring from one really hard orbit to another really hard orbit but this time we're not going to be doing that this time we will focus on the stuff that's all really close in like Daffel's wreckage see and now all these things that are really close in, they don't take a lot of Delta V to get from one to the other. And hopefully we can do that with a relatively cheap launch and one that we will bring entirely back down instead of uh, using an SRB that we're going to discard. So we'll see what the economics of that will be. Uh, Daffel's Wreckage is one that we want to get. Uh, this I haven't actually terminated any missions yet, but I'm going to show you me terminating at Rescue 2 because I think with a periapsis of 31 kilometers, after 17 years, it would have been done with. And mind you, that's uh, Earth years, I mean, you know, 365 day years, 24 hour. So, yeah, I'm on that clock. So I'm terminating that. That's land on the moon. We're just going to go through. Tansy's derelict will be object number two that we want to get. And rescue three debris is another thing that should have come down 25 kilometers. So I'm just going to terminate that. Uh, Mimus 2 says it's in flight, but it's actually pretty high up. So we're going to have to deal with that sometime. But we're not going to get on this go around since we're seeing the economics of getting stuff here. Uh, moon three debris, maybe. Uh, that's a little bit higher up. Oxnard's debris, definitely. So that's target number three. Mini moon, uh, one debris. Yeah, okay, that's a target as well. That's something we will try to get. This one's a little bit high. That's around the moon. That's just splashed down, so I'm just going to recover that. Mini claw, two debris, has a 51 kilometer periapsis. It's been 17 years, so I'm just going to say. I mean, I'm obviously trying to grab that when it's got. I mean, we could, but. I think it would have deorbited uh, in any reasonable sense. If we had focused on it all this time, it would have deorbited. Docking Porter debris. Well, that's a uh, 36 kilometer periapsis after 12 years, so I'll get rid of that. Daftry's derelict we can get, so that's number five. Megan's pod we can get, that's number six. Uh, Aster driller debris. That seems to be in a orbit that we can get. That's number seven. This uh, minimal claw debris has a periapsis of 30 kilometers. Uh, the apoapsis was a little bit high, but it's been a while, so I'll just terminate that. I mean, technically we could get at them at the apoapsis side and try and recover them manually, but uh, I think, legitimately speaking, they would have deorbited, so... We'll just go with that. So some of these I know are things that we can recover with some extra effort. And the first of these is the Paul Driller debris. That's a big stage, actually. That's uh, 211 tons. So what we can do is attach a controller uh, power and comms to it. And it's got fuel, so it could do a powered return as long as we remain in comm with it during the splashdown, probably. And otherwise, it'll just be destroyed. Uh, Puck 6, of course, is a space plane, so that should be able to come down on its own. That's another thing. There's the fuel transfer vehicle, which isn't actually uh, debris or anything. It's still operational. And it's got not only fuel, but also everything else that needs to push something as a tug. And... 
Puck Refueler needs mod prop to the orbit and has everything else. It's got a heat shield and everything. It just doesn't have enough propellant. So if we could get some mono prop to Puck Refueler, that would do the trick for that. And in fact, maybe we should do that first. Yeah, so we've got this. It just doesn't have any propellant. Well, I mean, it's got oxidizer, but no liquid fuel and not enough mod propellant to deorbit itself from this orbit. So we just need to get it some mod propellant and it can deorbit and use its parachutes. All right, so let me cook something up in the VAB to do all of these things and see what that looks like. Okay, so this is Retriever 2. And Retriever 2 has two Bobcat engines at the bottom. It has the heat shield at the bottom, inflatable, like that. And everything including this part up here is supposed to be recovered. So that's a pretty long thing. But I've seen that work out in Kerbal, so we'll just assume that it can work out this time too. Uh, the tugs you can see are here, and mainly what we're expecting to be recovering are Mark 1 pods or equivalents. So they're just going to be docked like that. Uh, well, you know, you can imagine the claw clawing, uh, claw clawing one. And then uh, we'll have them on all sides and inflate heat shield that that will be well covered by the heat shield as you can see as long as everything is balanced which who knows but we'll put the ones uh, the first ones at the bottom and then fill it like that so we're expecting seven objects and then one of the tugs is going to head out to the puck refueler to give it monoprop and probably just come down with it I think, <laughs> and uh, no, no. actually, why don't we have this be the monoprop refiller so that it can get back to, well, no, uh, hmm, I'll think about that. Uh, that needs to actually go out to the Paul Driller debris in order to attach, it's the controller and it'll have the parachute, uh, not parachutes, power and comms, there's no parachutes, so it'll have to do a powered landing, which is complicated because we'll have to have comms when doing the landing which isn't obvious. Um, well, we'll think about it, but this is what I've got. So, will it work? It's got parachutes so it can splash down or come down on its own. Uh, that's enough parachutes for 24 tons, which we will be with all the stuff on it at the end. And off the pad with the Bobcats, we have 1.21 thrust weight ratio and 1.3 in vacuum. I don't know if that's enough. Uh, Delta V in particular. Hmm. But I don't want expendable boosters. What I'm thinking is maybe I should, instead of having this tank here, use the adapter from 3.75 meter to 5 meter. This one. It'll look somewhat N1E. These are attached with uh, cubic octag, by the way. Margin. I mean, again, we don't need a lot of delta V to rendezvous with things, but we do need some. Okay, well, now we have better thrust weight ratio. We've got nearly 4,000 in vacuum. And I'm going to put some solar panels on. Okay, so that's modified, but I think we'll go with that with three Bobcat pairs, if you will, and the uh, bigger skirt there. All right, so we've got eight of those tugs. We've got some auto strutting, of course. That's the heaviest part. This needs to be to root part, which is a, which is a controller there. And maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. Let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, why don't we just take care of the puck refueler first? Uh, it doesn't really matter. They're all in the same planar orbit. They're basically very close to each other. I think we can just launch without even targeting something. Uh, throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Okay. It is an SSTO, and it looks like an SSTO. A lot of SSTOs end up looking like this. 
Okay, we are past the speed of sound and continuing on. No apparent problems as far as stability is concerned. I mean, our budget in orbit is going to be tight, so there is that to worry about. But it looks like we will have a budget in orbit. <laughs> it's not going to be zero. So that's good. And we also have to reserve for re-entry. Okay, we'll coast. I think we can deploy the aero shells and all. Because we get a little bit of Delta V. It's actually possible that the Tugs can grab everything and bring it to this without this changing its orbit at all. So there is that. Okay, well that is an orbit. The first thing we can do is get this top one off because it is going to go for the big haul driller debris, which is why it needs more significant independent comms. And all we need for the Paul drill of debris is comms and the controller. So let's see, where is it? Okay, well, anything like that would do. We'll go for the big ticket item first and see how everything else works out afterwards. And the Paul drill of debris is definitely the most expensive item. And the biggest, most dangerous debris. Oh no! We didn't have enough power. Gosh darn it. Why didn't I? I should have put more power on. <laughs> this took too long. Oh no, I didn't have hibernate and warp either. Uh, I think I've been playing realism too long. <laughs> uh, they have bigger batteries, you see. Okay. All right. All right. We've got another piece of debris to worry about. Back to the main mission, which actually has solar panels. I should put solar panels on this too. So, another piece of debris for us. <laughs> uh, I, I guess we could leave it up there as a relay, but... Uh, it, uh, it doesn't actually work as a relay without power, does it? I wonder about that. Okay, so, what can we do with this now? Maybe we should clean that up first, but, um, where are we? We are here. Mini moon debris is just like right there. Let's just go like what we're closest to. I'm trying to optimize for a combination of the speed that we're burning and the relative speed when we get there. And it looks like 40 is what we can do here. Okay, so let's go to that node. At least we've got a controller that can do that. And before I forget, let's try and get all these controllers on Hibernate and Warp Auto. Probably save us some trouble later. Okay, and burn. Okay, that's right on. We're not quite close to the target here yet, but we'll fix that. I feel like this isn't working out great right now. It's over there. That's a big separation. All things considered. I think I'm just going to send the little claw thing out to it while we're in line of sight of it. Use some of the claws substantial delta V. Okay, well, we'll get to it, but it's gonna be with a lot of delta V, and we'll have to watch out for comms. We probably not gotta stray too far from the mothership, but we gotta watch out for that. Power at least is okay because we've got the hibernate and warp now. So, what is it? It's just a piece of debris. It's not a pod. It is... It's a stage. It's got Science Junior on it, though. 
Well, I think we'll have enough Delta V for this, but I'm not sure. Okay, well, good enough. Okay, so... Now we've got this thing. <laughs> we have to get back to the mothership. It's in a higher orbit... No, we're in... Uh, yeah, it's in a higher orbit and behind us. Oh, that was not what I was looking for. Oh, uh, 2.7 will have to do. Okay. Yep. I hope we've got enough mod propellant for that relative speed there. Still says separation 2.7 kilometers. So we're not closing at all. Hmm. We're just outside render range. Well, there's going to have to help out with that. We need the rest of the Delta V for docking. Oh, okay, there's, a, there's an intersect point over there, at least. Well, this... item is a little bit more sticky out than the pods I was anticipating. I hope that'll be alright with our heat shield. I'm gonna try and turn this so that it's facing from this docking port. Okay, let's see if we can go straight in. I guess it's not too big. Okay, we have docked our first thingamajig. And we will go after another one. So next up, let's say Oxnard's to... Well, I mean, we're in a high orbit right now. So other stuff can catch up to us. Let's go for Daffle's Wreckage then. Okay, we'll go with this. And we're actually going to probably take our time instead of trying to force rendezvous with everything. Okay, well, that's all I'm gonna do with that. I'm going to use the little claw for everything else. So, arm and control from here. Okay, we will try this peculiar little burn here. Okay, is that fast enough so that we can approach decisively here? Not really. Okay, we've used about one-third of our propellant getting here. And what we have should be some sort of pod. It is a Mark 1 command pod. Yeah, I'll just grab it by the nose, it's fine. Got it. Okay, so now we have to get back to the mothership. Hope to meet it over there, close to the ascending node. But we're going to have to boost our periapsis up. Otherwise, they're going to get further apart. We could wait, like, lots of orbits. Well, that gets us a nice close encounter, but that relative speed is worrisome. 70 meters per second. That's a puck refueler right there. Um, but that's that just needs uh, some monoprop. Like, we could just uh, send a little thingamajig out to it. We'll try that later, but that's not what we're going after. I hope. I hope we're not targeting that accidentally, but no. It looks like we've got... Our retriever, which is somewhere, and is cutting in too much to our delta V here. So, retriever 2 will once again need to do something about this, which is not good. Oh, I need to auto strut that little thing. This is getting substantially harder than I thought it would be. We we're probably overly ambitious here. Okay, I think we can swing that. Alright, so that's an opportunity. But uh, I had seen that other little piece of debris in that puck refueler. And we just need to get mod prop to it so it can deorbit. So 
He'll send one of the Retriever 2's little probes to go to it and see if we can deorbit it. I don't know if he'll have enough mar propellant though, so... Uh, it's pretty close to deorbit it already. Great, we were short of mod propellant here. I mean, that's nice and all. That's an encounter and everything. But our periapsis there is too low. Okay, well, this sort of has a meetup. But. Oh, no. But we'll have to see if it will have enough delta V when it gets there in order to deorbit the target. Okay, but I think this will meet up. Well, we'll have to do this burn first, and then we've got a complex order of operations here. Oh, please don't dip it into the atmosphere. Well, that's not very deep into the atmosphere. Let's be positive about the situation. Okay, so that's one thing. I need to go to the tracking station. That's, a, that's very much skimming the atmosphere there. And what we're interested in is Daffle's wreckage. Our very oldest piece of debris. I'm gonna have to have the Retriever do the rendezvous burn here. Just so that we have enough propellant to dock. Okay, 168 we have left. And let us point to the target. I mean, it's possible this could have done the rendezvous burn too. But it's safer this way. I already have one dead end claw floating around. Ironically, uh, if we were around Earth, this would all have taken much less delta V because it's. Uh, because the curvature is less, it's easier to do the final bits of rendezvous and takes less fuel. Okay, we are connected. Okay. So that's two pieces. Now what? We have 161 left here. I want 100 left in order to deorbit, so we're probably not going to get everything. Now we're, we're just called Daffle's Wreckage now. Oh, Retriever 2 Probe... Oh, that's probably what we sent out to Puck Refueler, so that's not something we're picking up. There's another Retriever 2 Probe that we want to rescue. This Tansy is derelict behind us. We are... I think in a higher orbit than it. Let's see. Yeah. So it'll catch up to us. But let's focus on... Retriever 2 probe getting over to the puck refueler. In retrospect, it is probably not the best time to focus on it because it's going through the atmosphere. Uh, but it's not having that much effect, so. But it's tedious, so I'll go back to the tracking station. Oh. Uh, Abandon this mission and it'll be lost. No, I don't want to abandon the mission. Fine, I'll sit through the atmosphere part. Gosh. Okay, well, one way or another I'm gonna have to lift my apoapsis. Well, more my periapsis. Okay, we're not quite as close as I would like. Uh, let's go prograde. And see what lifting that up will give us. Okay, I'll take that 0.8 kilometers. We are completely out of the atmosphere this time. Oh, this uh, is a little piece of debris going retrograde. We better watch out for that. I think that's probably... Oh, that's Aster Driller debris. That was one of the ones we were targeting. That, I did not notice that it was going retrograde. So that's actually off the list. It's got its own claw, too. Oh, it doesn't turn, though. Let me disarm this claw. And then we'll try and claw... I don't know. It <laughs> seems dangerous to me. Dual clawing, but... Who knows. 
There's another little thing flying by. That's the one going retrograde, I bet. <laughs> Jeez, that thing seems dangerous. Okay, well, doesn't seem like it, but Fury's still out. Okay, let's point retrograde. It'll be easier to do it at Apoapsis, though. So let's wait. We don't have a whole lot of mod propellant. Before I forget or anything, let's do the parachutes. Disarm them. Well, here we go. 60. I don't care if it's close to the KSC, I just want it down. We'll get something back anyway. The best we can do is 52, basically. Well, I don't know how long that's gonna take. We'll see. We can't orient. <laughs> so hopefully aerodynamics will put it the right way. Or, oh, oh, we've got a reaction wheel on the little claw. Otherwise, this didn't have any way to orient, but we do have that reaction wheel. It seems like even with a 50 kilometer, 52 kilometer periapsis, we're going to be coming straight down. Okay, looks like it'll be on land, and I don't recognize where the heck we are. It is very far away from the KSC, probably other side of the world. Eight meters per second, probably because we're carrying that spare oxidizer and also the extra little probe up there. And we're down. All right, recover vessel. Well, at least we recovered something in this episode, but this has been a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be because of the, I made the Delta V margin too tight. If I had given it a few more, if given Retriever 2 a few hundred more Delta V, we would have done this much faster. But because it was so tight, I ended up having to do it slower. So we'll have to take our time with the little probes and it'll be a little bit more tedious, unfortunately. Anyway, we got that back. Only half value, though, but at least it's not up there. And we'll see what else we can get in the next episode. I don't know how many pieces we'll actually get out of the list that I had, but we'll get something. And then we'll see what to do about the rest. But I, uh, probably after the next episode, we'll shy away from doing more debris retrieval because that's a lot of episodes of debris retrieval. And we'll work on something completely different and we'll get back to debris retrieval some other time. I think we need to think about how to unlock the remaining tech. And I would like to do that prior to jumping to 1.12. I want to... Clear up as much debris as possible and unlock the tech tree before doing 1.12. Uh, I don't know if the visual mods are all updated. I'll have to check up on that. I want those updated before going to 1.12 as well. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.